All right, everyone, welcome to the last lesson for this module. So we got module two, lesson five. We're going to talk a little bit about nuclear chemistry. This one should be pretty short. Um, so first off, a couple of important people whose name, well, I can't pronounce this first guy's last name, so we'll just call him Henry. Um, he discovered radioactivity by leaving a piece of uranium in a drawer in a photography plate and an image was left behind. So we have radiation is energy that's emitted from a radioactive source that travels through space, acting both as rays and particles. Radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of radiation from the nucleus as an, of an atom, altering the identity of the atom or atoms involved. So nuclear chemistry in the name, it has to do with the nucleus. So we're changing the nucleus. Um, some people you should know about, Marie and Pierre Curie found polonium and radium to be radioactive. They identified alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Um, so like I said, we know chemical reactions occur when atoms are rearranged and electrons are moved around, but the nucleus remains unchanged. In a nuclear reaction, the nucleus is altered, like I said. And we're going to go more into alpha, beta, and gamma radiation here in a minute. Radioactive decay occurs when a nucleus is unstable and it loses energy by emitting radiation. All elements above number 83 decay, so all elements above number 83 are radioactive. The ratio of protons to neutrons determines the stability. Too many of either leads to decay. So ideally, we would want a one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons. within the nucleus. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about those different types of radiations that we taught, alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha radiation, so we have an alpha particle, looks like a little fish without a tail, contains two protons and two neutrons and has a double positive charge. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this, four, two. Two protons and two neutrons makes the mass four. A double positive charge, the bottom part is two. So an alpha particle is also a helium nucleus, okay? And so you're gonna see radiation equations that look like this, and it's very simple. We just keep with what you have on the left side, you have to have on the right side. So if you look at the top number, 226. So you ask yourself, 222 plus what gives me 226? That's four. So I need 88 on the bottom left. So I have 86 plus what gives me 88? That's gonna be two, so four, two, that's an alpha particle. So you see four, two, you can write alpha or you can write four, two helium because it's the same thing. All right, and so you're gonna get more practice with these in your homework, but that's pretty much all you have to do with these kinds of things. Beta radiation is a high speed electron. So beta, it's a B with a tail. And so what does that look like? Okay, well, I need 14 on the top. So 14 plus what gives me 14? That's a zero. I need six on the bottom. Seven plus what gives me six? Negative one. So I know it's a beta particle. Okay. Or you can literally write electron because it's mass is zero. It's charge is negative one. So for subatomic particles, the top, is going to be the mass, the bottom is the charge. So for a proton, it's one, one. Neutron, one, zero. Electron, zero, negative one. So those are your subatomic particles. And we know for elements, the top number is the mass, the bottom number is the atomic number. Okay, you can also have a positron. A positron occurs as a proton is converted into a neutron, releasing a positively charged particle with a mass of an electron. So it's basically an electron with a positive charge. So it's gonna be zero plus one, and you can do beta like that. Okay, so 24 plus zero is 24, 12 plus one is 13. And then finally, gamma radiation is obviously, we know the most dangerous, and the it's just like a, curse of why you can do. Um, now, it has no charge and no mass, so it's zero, zero, which makes it the most dangerous. It also makes it the most difficult to write in these equations, because if I didn't have this plus two, you wouldn't know that there was gamma radiation there. 
Well, you may have because it's uranium and you know that that's radioactive, so. So looking at the different particles, alpha, beta, gamma, you can see alpha particles can be blocked by a sheet of paper. Beta particles cannot go through your body. Whereas gamma rays, which is again, what makes them so dangerous is that they can go right through your body, um, which alters a bunch of stuff and you get cancer and stuff from that. You can see here very thick concrete or a couple of inches of lead, lead sheets can block those radiations. So if you've ever had an x-ray at like the dentist and they put that apron on you, that's got lead in it so that you, um, the, the rays don't harm anything else. Um, and then there are some equations. We have to talk about half-life. Half-life is the time it's needed for half of a radioactive sample to decay to form a more stable compound. Um, there are equations for this. I am going to have those in the presentation page. They're either be in your homework or um, just written out for you. Um, but it's very easy. Half-life is the time for half of it to go away. So all you're doing is dividing by two. So how many radioactive elements, atoms out of 100 will be left after one hour if a half-life is 20 minutes? Well, in one hour, if a half-life is 20 minutes, that means I have three half-lives, right? 20, 40, 60, 60 minutes is in an hour. So all I have to do is take 100 and divide by two three times. So 100 divided by two is 50. That's one half-life divided by two, that's 25. That's two half-lives divided by two, that's 12.5. That's my third half-life. So I'm gonna have 12.5 atoms remaining after three half-lives. So for the next question, we can look at the equations. So chromium-51 has a mass, uh, has a half life of 28 days. How much of a 510 gram sample is left after 56 days and after two years? So what we're gonna do first is look for N. N is the number of half lives and that is equal to the time divided by the time of the half life. So if we do the 56 days, knowing that a half life is 28 days, so I have a total of 56 days, my half life is 28, that's going to give me n is two. So how much is left? That's gonna be m sub t, so mass over time is gonna be equal to the original mass divided by two raised to the n. So if I start originally with 510 grams, I'm gonna divide it by two raised to the two. When I do that math, it gives me 127.5 grams left. So I'm gonna erase this so that we can do the next, well, I'll erase the part on top here. I'm gonna erase this part so that we can do the next part and do the two years. Okay, well, two years is 365 times two. So that's gonna to be, to, to do N, it's gonna be 730 divided by, again, the half-life is 28. That will be equal to and this, it doesn't have to be a whole number because we're just gonna plop it into our calculator. We're not just dividing by two because we're not dividing by two 26.1 times. So then we do the same thing. The mass over time is gonna be equal to the mass original divided by two raised to the number of half-lives. So that's gonna be 510 divided by two raised to the 26.1. Be careful how you put that in your calculator. And your final answer here, after two years, you're gonna have 7.09 times 10 to the negative six grams. And again, those, you should look at those equations before you uh, look at these problems, but you could pause and go and look at them while we were going. You probably should have said that. Oh well. well um, so those calculations are really simple. And the most basic thing is being able to divide by two, especially on those multiple choice questions when you're not able to use your calculator. And then finally, we're gonna talk about two nuclear, uh, two types of nuclear reactions. We got fission and fusion. Fission occurs when an unstable nucleus, nuclei is bombarded with neutrons. This splits the atom and releases energy and more neutrons creating a chain reaction. So you take uranium mass 235, 
you bombard it with a neutron makes it mass 236. That mass of 236 makes it unstable. The ratio is not good between protons and new, uh, neutrons in the nucleus, and it breaks up into barium, krypton, three more neutrons, and a lot of energy. So when it says it's a chain reaction, it's just saying these three neutrons now go off and hit three more atoms of uranium. And so it keeps going until your uranium runs out. So this is what occurs in a nuclear reactor. Um, so in order to, to make sure that there is no bad things, no meltdowns, no explosions, you have to control the speed of the neutrons because they need to be slowed down in order to be absorbed. The number of neutrons available. If you've got too many, it'll be out of control. Um, there are some special pieces of machinery, control rods that are used to slow or stop the reaction so it doesn't overheat. And the energy, the heat that's being released, it needs to be captured. And if you ever think about, um, and cooled. So if you ever think about a nuclear facility, or if you think about the Simpsons, because that's like where everyone sees nuclear plant, there's always like something smoke coming out of those things. That's just steam because those are cooling towers to cool the energy that is um, removed from the reaction to make it useful. And so it's steam. And so it's not anything dangerous coming off. It's just steam. And then we have fusion reactions. Fusion reaction. Oh, and also there's lots of waste in this. Okay, there's lots of nuclear waste that comes with this. So it's not great. Um, I mean, there are mines in the deserts in the West that are just buried with nuclear waste because they didn't know what to do with it because it's radioactive for so many years based on its half-life. And then fusion occurs when a small nuclei combines to form a larger nuclei. This requires a huge amount of energy to start the reaction, but supplies much more energy than fission. Fusion occurs on the sun. That's where the sun's energy comes from. You take four individual hydrogen ions or hydrogen atoms, and you can combine them together to give you helium, two positrons, and lots of energy. Now on Earth, controlled fusion is very desired. If you've ever heard of cold fusion, being able to do this reaction, but at a cold temperature and ex ex not at an extremely high temperature, that would be like endless energy, basically. And so to do it on here, you take two isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, you react them together, they combine to form helium, one neutron, and lots of energy. And the important thing that you need to know about fission versus fusion, fission, waste, fusion, no waste. Fission, you get energy. Fusion, you get much more energy. Fission, we're doing it. Fusion, we want to do it. Okay. That's it for this note, and that's it for this unit. I know this unit was long. I know these notes were complicated. I feel like I might have been rushing at points. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything. All right, bye.